about the first miracle that Jesus performs. And what's significant is, is that Jesus actually was resisting performing the miracle. Listen to what it says. There was a wedding at Canaan in Galilee. The mother of Jesus was there, and Jesus says to his disciples, had, the disciples likewise had been invited to the celebration. At a certain point, the wine ran out, and Jesus told Jesus' mother told him, they have no more wine. Jesus replied, how does that concern, concern of yours involve me? <laughs> I mean, what do, I, what do you want me to do? There's no wine. Well, how, how, is, how do we would react to that, something like that? If Arlene came up to me and said, hey, the party's going great here, but there's no more food. And I said, well, does that concern me? <laughs> She'd probably slap me silly. <laughs> doesn't concern you. Do I do all the work? <laughs> and what does it concern Mary that there's no more wine? Wasn't she one of the guests? Isn't the responsibility of the, of, the, of the staff that was there to make sure that the bride and the groom have everything they need? And yet it was Mary that comes to Jesus and says, we need more wine. What did Mary do? She got involved. Mary got involved. And how did she get involved? What did she do? She employed the help of her son. What was Jesus going to do in order to make more wine? Did she even know? Was Jesus going to jump into the... Uh, well, you'd have to have a darn good big truck to get all that wine, right? I was at a winery once up in Galilee, and it was huge wine presses. I don't think it was there back then, but I'm sure that they made wine. So they could have gone up there, I guess, and get some wine. But no. What does Jesus do? He takes these pots that were used for ritual cleansing. When someone would come into the house, it was tradition to wash the feet of those who came. And so they had these pots that were empty and they needed to be filled. And so he commands them to go and to fill them with water. He fills them with water and listen to what it says. His woman, what does this concern yours involvement in me? My hour has not yet come. His mother instructed those waiting on table. Do whatever he tells you. So Mary knew something, didn't she? And Jesus is saying, it's not my time yet. But Mary knew something. So Mary had the ability to move the heart of Almighty God. Mary had the ability to move God's heart and God's will. For who? The wedding guests. Because why? She got involved. As prescribed with Jewish ceremonial washings, there were... A at hand six stone water pots, each one holding 15 or 25 gallons. Fill these jars with water. Jesus ordered at which they filled them to the brim. Now he said, draw out and take it to the waiter in charge. And they did, and as he instructed them, the waiter in charge tasted the water, made wine. So what happened? Jesus ordering that these six water pots or water jugs be filled. They were big. To the brim with water. And then he says, now take some of that water. It's in those jugs. And bring it and pour it out to the chief waiter. And in doing so, what happened? The water turned to wine. So what was it that caused the miracle to take place? First it was Mary who did what? Who employed her son to do what? To do something that he says was not his time. So Mary was asking God to do something in time that was actually outside of time. Are you following me so far? Above the natural course of time. Then the second thing that takes place is that Jesus orders the jugs to be filled. And as they get filled, they get filled with what? Water. 
But as they obediently go to the chief waiter and pour it out, what happens? The water is turned into wine. What caused that change to take place? I submit to you, it was obedience to the word of God. They turned average, ordinary water into wine. And it wasn't just any wine, because listen to what it says. <clears throat> the chief waiter in charge tasted the water made wine. And without knowing where it had come from, only the waiter knew, waiters knew, since they had drawn the water. Then the water waiter in charge called the groom over and remarked to them, People usually serve the choice wine first. Then when the guests have been drinking a while, a lesser vintage. What you have done is keep the choice wine for now. So not only was it just wine, but it was the very best wine that you could buy. And so God changes the elements at the very first miracle from water into wine. What is God going to do with our lives? You see, as you get filled with the water, because you are that vessel, you are the bride of Christ. Your potential is to be the bride of Christ. God wants to marry you. Did you hear in the first one it says that he want his, your creator wants to marry you. He wants to marry you. That's how close of a relationship that he wants with us. And in that marriage relationship, what does he do? He takes the vessel, which is what the land is, by the way. And he does what? He fills it with water. And do you know what the water is symbolic of? The water is symbolic of the word of God in your life. So as you are filled, as this vessel is filled with the Word of God, and how does it get filled? To the brim. And as you are taken in obedience to what? To the wedding feast. What happens? You are poured out. And in being poured out, what happens? You turn into the very best wine that God could possibly offer to others. Now, when does this happen? How many of us know the story of Adam and Eve? Isn't it funny that Eve was created when Adam was asleep? Because I think he was awake. He would go, are you crazy? <laughs> I'll marry that girl. <laughs> when God does a miracle, out there. Yeah. <laughs> when God does a miracle, what does he do? He puts Adam to sleep, doesn't he? And putting Adam to sleep, while he's asleep, he, he creates who? Eve. And what does he do? He brings Eve to him when he wakes up and says, uh, I got you a wife, Adam. And he says, truly this is bone of my bone and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called E. God takes from within you the vessel that you will need in order to bring forth your potential. Guess what? You cannot bring forth your potential. You cannot bring forth new life unless there is a vessel that will carry it. You are the vessel that God wants to use to do what? To carry His Word to the world. You. Why? It's no different than children being born into the world. A woman becomes the vessel. When was the last time you saw a man, unless they're a freak of nature, carry to full term a child? To any term. Unless you read about it in the Enquirer. <laughs> 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 the 
The only way is if you have a woman. It's a man with a womb, a vessel, where what God does is He changes the very cells of that child, of, of, of what's going to be a child, into its potential. When you look at a little baby, what are you looking at? You are looking at potential, aren't you? Aren't we saying when, if we lose a child, they say, they were so full of potential. They hadn't begun to live. And you know that you can take this into every aspect of your lives. You can have all the wisdom and the knowledge that you, in the world, but if you can't take wisdom, if you can't take your understanding, okay, and bring it into knowledge and not bring it into reality, then what do you have? Whew. Dust in the wind. You have to be able to bring your wisdom into reality. It has to come into reality. And if you're going to learn to bring the wisdom of God into reality, the only way that that can happen is through a vessel. And that vessel is your personality. It's who you are. And guess what? It's going to rub against all the other personalities out there. The only way that your life can really begin to come into its potential is it has to go through the trials and tribulations of life. You have to learn to build relationships. Do you know why that Jewish people have more money 10 to 1 than most people? Isn't it funny that they do? The reason for that is, is because it's part of their nature to do what? To build relationships. What do you think a wedding is all about? It's a commitment to a relationship. And a relationship that does what? It's going to bring forth something. And so if you're going to bring the wisdom of God into the world, then you have to have a vessel. And this vessel is that that's going to bring it forth. Because who am I? The bride of Almighty God. I'm going to bring His wisdom into the world. I'm going to be the one that carries it. If you have an idea, and if you don't have a place to put that idea, then what happens to it? It blows away. And then you're watching TV one day and say, that was my idea. How did they get it? <laughs> because you might have had the idea, but you didn't have the fortitude to do what? To build the relationships that you need to bring it into existence. And that takes commitment. That takes, in a marriage, covenant. A covenant has to be created. In some form or some fashion. Or else what happens? There's like holes in your pots. And everything that you have, all the potential that you have, comes pouring out. Isn't it funny that God would use six? He said there were six stone water pots. You know, nothing is a coincidence in the word of God. The number six goes back to the letter Vav in the Hebrew language. Remember, these are Hebrews. The letter Vav is a nail. How was Jesus put on the cross? He was nailed to the cross. What does a nail do? It takes the tent pegs of a tent and it puts it into the ground. So that you can do what? Sleep inside the vessel. When the nails went into Jesus' hands, do you know what happened? He became the vessel that would bring life to you. 
He opened the door so that you can take what was in the heavens and bring it to the earth. The letter Vav is like a stream of light that goes from the very heavens itself to the earth below. As it, it, your will is done in the heavens, so shall it be in the earth. And so it takes that vessel in order to be able to, to bring the thoughts of heaven into the earth. To bring it into reality. Are we all following today? And so when you're looking at your life, you say, I don't feel like doing it. I don't feel like moving forward. Well, the only reason why is because you need to be filled. The vessel needs to be filled. The six water pots need to be filled with what? Water! Which is what? The Word of God being put in there. And how did it become wine? How did it change that which was water into wine? It was the pouring out in the obedience of following what Jesus said to do. Because He is the Word made flesh. And so when you're obedient to the Word of God, not knowing anything except following the orders of what the Word of God says, you turn what was water not only into wine, but into the very best wine. Where? At a wedding feast where it reminds us that we need to be in covenant. And it's in the suffering of that covenant, the struggle of that covenant, that you build a relationship with your God, that you are able to change the world. That God is able to change the world through you. No different than when we have the wine and the bread here. Turning that into the very body and blood of Jesus Christ. So we have a great blessing. God asked us for the next six days to work. To work. Believe me, by tomorrow morning, Neil, will you be working? Crack of dawn, working. The same struggle every single day, every single week, working. And what God wants to do is He wants to take that vessel, that work, and He wants to fill it with His Word. So you begin to learn the instructions of Almighty God, and you can take that which seems like just plain old water and turn it into wine. Turn it into wine, into the finest wine. Where is the finest wine served? at the finest tables in the world, right? You don't bring cheap wine to some king, do you? <laughs> you want the best wine. They say, give me that best wine. I don't know what the best wine is because you know, I usually can't afford the best wine. <laughs> Are we following today? Do you see how God can work? That means in every circumstance, every problem, if you can see it in the light of his word, guess what? Wow, you can see how God can bless you. You can see how God can build a life that is so valuable and to reach your potential. A miracle takes place. And so pray today that that miracle will continue to take place in you. And may the Lord add a blessing to his word.